Uh, so I'm Andrew, for those that don't know me. Uh, my Instagram handle is eatwithmal. And um, I'm originally from Toronto. Um, growing up, it was very common for us to have family-style dinners with all the relatives, grandparents. So food was always like a big part of my life. And then also uh, watching Disney cartoons. So I really love Lion King and that kind of like in influenced me into going into the film industry and that's kind of what I do right now. I've been working in animation and visual effects for the past 10 years. And uh, recently I kind of moved into a managerial role and I, I kind of missed doing something creative. So I've been like, I was thinking about it for a while and uh, I thought maybe I was going to try photography and use, uh, use that as my creative outlet. And then I, I started my own food Instagram channel. And that's, that's pretty much how I started. And uh, when I first moved here to Vancouver three years ago, uh, I followed a lot of food bloggers and Instagrammers. So I kind of knew where all the good spots were. And, and uh, I kind of knew how, how to get started, I guess. Uh, this, the cat is just something uh, my wife sketched up on, on paper and uh, and then I just traced it on the computer to, to finish it up. And then I guess when we first started we were trying to think about like what kind of handle to, to use and what wasn't already taken. And I went with Eat With Mao because I wanted the Instagram channel to rep represent everywhere I ate with my wife. And my wife's last name is Mao. And then Mao and Cantonese is, is cat, so we decided to just go with the cat logo. My favorite restaurants are ones that are good portion, good value, and, uh, and, and of course good taste. So my favorites are, are uh, Phnom Penh, the Cambodian one in Chinatown. Even though the lineups are long, it's always worth the wait and it's such a good deal. The, the chicken wings and the butter beef, you can't go wrong with that. Every time I have friends visiting, I always bring them to Phnom Penh. Ramen Man, uh, it's, a, it's a West End uh, ramen shop. It, it's kind of like modern ramen. They specialize in chicken broth and everything is sous vide there. So it's a little bit different. And I would say there's like a little bit of like a French influence to it too. You guys do ramen really well. Um, with coffee and and uh, and beer be part of it. I think the coffee and craft beer scene is like crushing it for the, compared to the rest of Canada. But uh, what I think it could work on is having more diversity, like different cultures of food, like Caribbean. I don't feel like there's enough like Trinidad, like or like Jamaican food or. I kind of feel like everything is either like Japanese, Korean, or Chinese, and I, I would say like the first step is to diversify, have more cultural, different cultures of food, and then improve on that. Because I, I actually think the Chinese food here can be so much better, like compared to to the East Coast. Like I know a lot of locals here say that Chinese food here is is really really good, but. Uh, it's hard to compare when you haven't had something better. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. Like there was an Indian place that just opened on the West End on Davy. It's called. It's they specialize in dosas. It's like a North, South North Indian or South Indian. I don't remember, but it's kind of like the Indian crepe. Yeah, and then. It's pretty good. They just opened and they hired the chef from uh, uh, House of Dose. House of Dose? Taste. House of Doses. It's in, on Kingsway and King Edward, some, somewhere around there, near Palette Coffee. Oh, definitely. I feel like people look at a photo and they're like, oh, I want to eat there. Like, it could taste terrible, but a photo could just be just change someone's mind like oh I'm gonna give it a try because it looks pretty I'll, I guess my favorite Instagram foodies are the ones that excel at photography so uh, I looked up to uh, Team Chomp, Rich, uh, Sharon, SK Foodholic, OK Bites, Nate um, 
recently I'm, I'm, I've been studying Layla and Nora a lot, Nom Nom YBR and Layla, Layla Likes, and when I first started, I quickly realized Instagram is like such a big platform to get media invites rather than writing, and then I kind of focused more on photography after that. I, I When I started, I had a blog, I was writing, and I was also taking photos. And I noticed most of my invites were mostly through Instagram, and that became like my main focus. I just want to have really good content. And I, I kind of study all of these Instagrammers, how they how their shots look like, and I kind of mimic them. When I was in art school, we were we were taught a lot to uh, to look at the to look at the old masters and just like replicate the drawings, replicate the painting, and then develop your own style. So when I first started. I would say I was like mimicking their style a lot and then now I'm kind of like discovering my own style slowly. Yeah, there's some good ones in Toronto. I, I don't know, I think there's... I haven't found one that was like just wowed me that was like going everywhere. I, maybe there, there's there's like a lifestyle Instagrammer out there that's like, that's like traveling the world and eating like everywhere all over the all over the globe but like most of the international foodies they usually just stay in their own city i would like to see a foodie that is like globe trotting and being having everything like sponsored that would be like the dream but like usually everyone kind of stays in their own city and yeah. does their does their thing but i think that's more like coming on youtube yeah yeah like yeah, yeah definitely so yeah, my Instagram is like my creative outlet, and and then uh, I kind of just want to change it up, change the subject, like not just photograph food. I want to like photograph cars, maybe landscapes, portraits of people. So I just want to like kind of slowly move into like the lifestyle road, but also still have like at least fifty percent food posts, but. I don't know, I always just love cars, like the design. Just like by itself, just like an art piece by itself, cars. Yeah. What's your favorite car? Favorite car, Acura NSX. <laughs> Have you gotten to drive one of those yet? Maybe one day. <laughs> you gotta give me a ride. Of course, of course. Probably the best piece is don't worry about your numbers. The followers really doesn't translate to how many media events you go to. I would focus on building uh, your network, building relationships with people, because that's really how you're gonna get the invites. When people know you, the people that have influence know you. Of course, you don't go up and like suck up to everyone, but just be be friendly, and also just have good content. Like if they know that you can do it, they're not gonna have a problem to invite you. When I first started, I kind of thought like, oh, I need to blog. I gotta start writing. I need to be in like the top top 20, top 10 list on Zomato, but then I quickly realized you just have to do Instagram, you just have to provide really good content, and once you have the content, you should start building your network. Like even if you're, in, not not just with foodies, like let's say you go to a restaurant, um, talk to the manager, if he comes by and, and says, how is everything? Just, just talk to him, tell him your experience, and maybe give him your contacts, and who knows, maybe maybe like a week or two later he might invite you back for a tasting, because actually that happened to me recently. I went to uh, a restaurant here, locally, and uh, the, re the manager saw me taking photos, he asked me what I was doing, and ending up, um, they took care of the bill. And then two weeks later he invited me back to eat prime rib. So you, you never know, it, it doesn't have to be like an influencer that you, you're networking with, just do it with everyone. You never know where, where it goes. Uh, for me, first, it needs to taste good. And then, I'm not too worried about the presentation as long as the taste is good. The, the presentation is more for like photography, Instagram type. But for me to come back as a customer, the food has to be good. And the food has to be consistently good it can't just be like good and then like the next time it kind of like mediocre it should be consistent um i guess i kind of touched on it earlier but i would like to travel all over the world and just
just eat, basically. So I'm, that's why I'm kind of um, trying to move into like the lifestyle realm, just so that I can have more opportunities, like with more brands, just to enable me. Like that's why I started working with cars, car companies. So I don't know, maybe I can do a road trip to 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 Pam or Seattle or Portland, and yeah, I don't know, like. We'll see where it goes, but it would be nice if I can just do this full time one day. I guess Diana from Foodology, she, she uh, I would say she's like one of my mentors. <laughs> she doesn't know it though, but she gives me a lot of good advice. And uh, I don't know, just like all the friends I met along the way, like Yuki, Pico Pico Life, Magme, uh, I don't know, like. There's just so many people to name. Like, there's so many awesome people I've met through this platform. It's just, uh, it just keeps growing every day. Yeah. Follow Eat With Mao on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube if you haven't already. Peace. <laughs>